believe we can start... When can we start integrating the aisles? Uh, 1454. Ten years after game start. So hopefully we'll be up to plus 190 by then. Thalmond! They do want an alliance now. Fantastic. They don't want a royal marriage for some reason, but we'll get an alliance first. And then they'll want a royal marriage. They might even send us the offer. Look, there we go. Oh, that was France. We didn't have a royal marriage with France yet. What's up with that? Confirm. Now they're going to decline our offer because we already have a royal marriage. Okay, so we have a nice little entente, you might say, here. So we were allied with France. We're allied with Kildare and with Thomond. Thomond. Tho someone Irish tell me how to actually pronounce that. I'm going to say Thomond. I'm going to guess that it's Thomond. Well, I guess the actual, like, native Irish would be Twav Muman, Twa Twa Muman, Twa Muman. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not great. Not great with Celtic languages. All right, let's see. There we go. Repay all loans, and then we're gonna start building up our army again. And when it gets big enough, we're gonna start conquering Ireland. we will need to consolidate our Irish territory before we can actually think seriously about fighting England again. As we've proven, France cannot get any troops here. So, that is an issue. Build up to six infantry, and then we will add, we will build back up to four cavalry, and then we'll build the rest infantry. All right. France is influencing us. Uh, we receive one monarch power. Uh, we have the lowest monthly gain, in, so that's great. I am quite happy to be in the French sphere of influence at this moment. Um, do we want to boost stability first? Probably should boost stability first before we tech up. Just because there are rebellions looming and not the good kind. Not the kind that are Scots leading Scots in rebellion. Disillusion of the Monasteries Act. Um, we'll boost stability one more time first, and then we will pass that act. Increase the monarch's control and power by authorizing any ecclesiastical property with an annual income below a certain value to be confiscated. We're paving the way for the Reformation here. And we are no longer capped on money. We are now capped on... Uh... Let's see, we have to renew our royal marriages. Oh, nope, just with one. We're now capped on manpower. So we're going to start building up a little bit of a war chest. We might be able to rebuild our fleet, which would be nice. Unhappiness among the artisans. Uh, we'd lose stability. Or we can take out another loan. That's fine. We'll be able to pay it back pretty soon. It's going to be, what, 50-something to pay back? 47. Not bad at all. Okay. We're calling our diplomat from Kildare. Uh, let's make sure our relations are maxed with France. Who else is England not friends with right now? Scotland, Denmark, who's also our rival, and Burgundy, who is France's rival. So, there aren't a lot of other inroads we can make in, in like, an anti-English coalition. Um, yeah. Foreign rulers with loose lips telling us about wars we don't care about. And uh, yeah, we're not really we're not really doing much with innovativeness right now because we're not uh, we're not an innovative country at the moment. 
should be able to pay that loan straight back. Subject is tired of war. Uh, one of our subjects has been destabilized for quite a bit. We could let them handle it, but it'd be show of good faith. Yeah, we'll send aid. It's one more loan to pay back. We don't even have the money to raise armies. Or we don't even have the manpower to raise any more armies right now anyway, so... We'll go into debt to help our subjects. We're just nice like that. I did not say I wanted to disband anything, actually. Pike Squares! Treason against Scotland. Recruitment is out of necessity, something that has to be a somewhat decentralized affair. At least so far, as we currently have uh, levy troops. Which, by the way, I should be drilling these guys. Thank you for reminding me. Um... So this, this event, we will say that this event is what inspired us to try to create a better drilled army, because I should have been doing that a long time ago. Often it will be entrusted to nobles in the capital, and then they are responsible to turn up a set number of men in the various provinces under our control. This is a system that to some extent relies on trust, as the central government is not involved in all the details of the countryside mustering, and the only form of control we have... Uh, are the often sporadic inspections of the army itself conducts. One such inspection in Sutherland has un unearthed quite a local scandal. The roles we have for the area is full of fictional names, and nobody seems to know what we could actually muster from the region. So I can lose professionalism, uh, lose manpower in the entire Highlands area, which would suck, uh, or I could piss off the nobles. Um, gain some professionalism it would also cause unrest in the area um, it's already pretty high this isn't the Highlands area though Inverness Sutherland Lollard Heretics let's see yeah I don't think we can afford the extra unrest. We're just going to have to ignore it for now. Took about 2,000 men out of our manpower pool, but, uh, you know, we'll do what we can. All right, um, so all of our allies should be squared away for now, which means... Let's, uh, let's get Portugal... Portugal on board here. Also remax out with Castile. Maybe we'll go after Aragon, Burgundy, just all the local cool people. Maybe we'll start uh, trying to buddy up with Sweden because if they go to war with Denmark and make them, you know, that'll weaken Denmark. Pay back this loan. Yes, we can. We're losing innovativeness, which I don't think we had any. Maybe we had a little bit there. War of the Roses is still going on, which is nice, which means England is still going to be destabilized. Thanks in part, I might add, to uh, our um, role in the uh, depleting their forces. I'm also going to reduce war exhaustion as soon as I can, because these rebels are getting dangerous. Call Diplomat. How about the Kingdom of Aragon? Would you guys like to be friends someday? We sure would. At least until the Iberian wedding happens, and then nobody will care about you <laughs> anymore. Um... Actually, let's build up our infantry force first, rather than waiting to have the money to build up cavalry. Because having more troops available, if a rebellion happens, is going to be better than having fewer troops available. Sun Tzu said that, I believe. Alright. Getting our drill on. 
Getting our 0.24% professionalism. We're a feudal realm. It's going to take a while, you know, to get to a point where... Uh, where we can actually muster anything approaching a professional army. Actually, our finances have cut up, caught up now to where we... As soon as we have the manpower, we can pretty much start building cavalry. Yeah, all of my Diplo power for a little while is going to go to reducing war exhaustion. Oh, never mind. There we go. We lowered the threshold enough that there's no longer a threat of rebellion. So that was well placed diplomatic power. We we sent we sent an envoy of the king out into the countryside, the queen regent or the queen consort out into the countryside. Queen consort regent. I guess if the king's dead, she's not really a consort anymore. Um, but we sent her, we sent one of her envoys out of the countryside to be like, hey, you know, Queen, Queen Regent Mary is, is, you know, malevolent. Uh, she's often motivated by malice or hostile intent. Do you really want to rebel right now? Because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, let's see, increase free trade. We want to gain mercantilism. I always go for the path that gives us more mercantilism. Raise some more knights. We fight in the Latin style that is uh, better known in the lowlands as opposed to the highlanders who fight in much more of a... Uh, oh, I believe we can start annexing our vassal now. Aragon, uh, we don't care about being friends with you anymore. Yeah, the Highlanders, who would not really have knights, they, they still fight very much in the infantry-focused clan kind of style. Integration is a slow process. Cool. Um, Vanex, the Isles. We did not... Oh, did we? We did complete the mission. We don't need... Oh, we don't need the Isle of Man for that. Okay, cool. Awesome. So we've, uh, we've put down the McDonald's. So Bank of Scotland, uh, national banks typically exist to finance the state, but Scotland shall take a different approach. The Bank of Scotland will lend mostly to business owners to encourage private development. Uh, so we have to save up a thousand gold to make that happen, which will not happen for a while, because uh, we do need to build up our army, and then we're going into Ireland. We will go ahead and make the Isles into a state, even though we don't control man. And that means the clergy is going to want some land. And we'll give them Ayrshire. And we'll give them Aberdeen. That will make them happy. Because these are two high-tax provinces, relatively high-tax provinces that uh, don't have a center of trade or anything. So I'm not worried about reducing their trade value. I guess we did. Uh, uh, maybe it would have been better to give him somewhere with less manpower. We don't really have a lot of provinces with less manpower, though. Like, I could have given them something out in the Hebrides, but then their tax bonus isn't really going to help us much. By the way, uh, if we go to trade goods. So they've added coal in as a late-game trade good. Um, we already have a province that will become a coal province in Ayrshire. Um, and if we take Northumberland, we'll have two. So that's my goal, is to control those two areas so that we can start churning out some goal, coal in the late game. We need at least 20 development in the province, uh, at least 20 innovativeness, uh, and then we have to have the Enlightenment Institution. So that will be cool. So yeah, we just got to build up our army here and then rebuild our army. <laughs> who, uh, after thousands of Scots, valiantly died fighting the English. Who, by the way, are still embroiled in the War of the Roses, which is amazing. I just hope that they choke and die and fall apart. Maybe the, the Welsh declare independence and the Cornish declare independence and then they're thrown into religious turmoil, you know. As, as horrible as that war can possibly be for them, uh, you know, the better. 
Latin Knights. Yeah, we didn't. I didn't recruit any mercenaries on accident, did I? I do that sometimes. So yeah, we'll rebuild our army, and then we are we're marching off into Ireland. We want to create a kingdom over all of the Celtic-speaking people, which will eventually also include Brittany. Uh, Denmark has been discovered building a spy network. By the way, I want to actually read the text of this. So Ulster has always been a tempting target, but until recently too closely watched by the English king. With England distracted, perhaps now would be a good opportunity to venture into Ireland. They're not guaranteed or anything, are they? Ulster is only allied with another Irish miner. Only allied with other Irish miners, one of which we are also allied with. And only other Irish miners, which is also one that we're allied with. So let's make sure... I'm going to put a diplomat permanently on allies. I'm going to put another one on... Can't really salvage our relationship with England, probably. Who else? Oh, we have a slot free. So let's take a look around. 8-2 for Silgo. Uh, no, no. 6-2, 7-1. I'm looking at their overall development and then specifically at their manpower to see who's going to make a good ally. Silgo would make a good ally. Um, they're not friends with Thomond, though, so we might hurt our relationship with Thomond. Um, so who would be the next best? 6-2 for Connacht. We're already allied with them. 6-2 for Lion. Um, 6-1. So Connacht and... I'll just call him Leinster. It's easier than trying to pronounce... than obviously mispronouncing... Celtic names. So these guys are they're allied with England. Screw that. Uh, and then we've got Clan Ricard over here. Mr. Chicanal. Thelman doesn't like them. Okay. So this is called un, un, uh, Untangling the Diplomatic Web. Here. Ormond. Cork and Desmond are our options here. Ormond is the strongest of the three. They don't get along with Kildare. Cork does not get along with Kildare. Desmond. Desmond would actually be a good ally. All right. Or actually, it's the Kingdom of Munster. Even though the McCarthys, those of you that have followed me, since Crusader Kings Chronicles on PC Gamer, the the McCarthys are not the rightful kings of Munster. Let's be serious with ourselves. Only only a true O'Brien can rule over Munster, so we might have to do something about that. I mean, eventually they'll be ruled over by a steward, because we're going to conquer all of their asses. But, you know, that's, that's, that's a detail for another time. <laughs> okay, end of the War of the Roses. The House of Frobisher. I have no idea who that is or where they're from. Uh, so it was not the Lancasters, it was not the Yorks, it was not even the Tudors, it was some other minor family. Uh, King Richard Frobisher has come victorious. Uh, King of the Frobisher dynasty, thing of the past. Both factions have resolved to passively work against the Frobisher dynasty for now. So let's take a look at... Uh, what these last several years have done. Um, we've almost recovered from devastation. Inverness is the only province that currently is experiencing devastation. Is our monarch good enough? We are accumulating prosperity under Mary. She's actually um, helping us become quite prosperous. Um, England, well, it's not as devastated as I would hope. Uh, London is... In pretty bad shape, actually. Uh, 
I hope it'd be a little bit more devastated, but they are experiencing some devastation, so that's good for us. That is quite good indeed. We, we have a truce with them, right? Truce until September 1460. I think we'll have our army rebuilt by then. I would hope anyway. A couple more cavalry. Is England allied with any other Irish miners? That's another thing we should pay attention to. Oh, they're not allied to Lyon anymore. Uh, I guess we could have. I guess we could have gone with them. But uh, let's see. Who do they not get along with? Oh, they're being occupied by Kildare. Yeah. So probably not a good idea there. They are not. Uh, they're not super into us. These McCarthy's. All right, marrying Irish clans. Hell yeah, alliances on the island of Ireland. Hell yeah, more legitimacy among our future Celtic subjects. All right, great. Um, we need more men for our army, so we are going. Uh, we're asking Queen Mary. There's a lot of Marys. Like, like I get it. Um, send a letter to Queen Mary of Thomond. Uh Let's see. Yeah, this is a different Mary. I mean, like, I get it. Yeah, they're, we're, we're Catholic. We're really into Mary. But it's like every, every woman so far in this campaign is named Mary. Um, we'll ask. We'll ask if Thalman wants to send us some men for our army, because we're about to sweep into Ireland and uh, cause trouble for their rivals. So uh, they should they should see the wisdom in that. <sighs> Excellent. Thank you. Finally, we've heard back from our dearest Mary regarding our request for her husband. The most noble king Turlo the Fourth has decided to grant it. The reply was sent back to us together, which, by the way, Turla is the, uh, that's the Angla, the more anglicized version of the name from, if you remember the character in Crusader King Chronicles whose name looked like it was spelled Twardlebach, and I could never figure out how to say it, that's actually Turla. Like, Irish is just basically ignore most of the letters, and that's how you actually pronounce it. Um, the reply was sent back together with a fine troop of Thamondian recruits. A letter of thanks shall be sent immediately to the generous King Turtle IV. Long may he reign. So we have, uh, we have some more, uh, Irish men coming to join our armies. Uh, soon to do combat against, uh, the other clans under the banner of the Stuarts of Scotland. I think I went, I went a little bit uh, DDR Jake there. Under the banner of the Stuarts of Scotland. It's not his accent, but his kind of soft, soft, soothing way of talking. Uh, let's see. Which, by the way, if you are from Scotland or you know more, you know, some things about Scottish history, I might not. Leave them in the comments, because I like to use these series to learn from you guys as much as I like to share what I know. When Mary was first made the royal consort, uh, the Arbuth Arbuthnots were excited. Now that she is the royal regent of the realm, they are ecstatic. Mary is now one of, if not the most powerful woman in the realm, and the family has made it very clear to us that they expect to be treated in accordance to her position. Uh, officers from the Arbuthnot family will be favored for promotion, regardless of merit. We'll lose some navy tradition for our zero ships. Um, they'll remember that we came to our help. Uh, yeah, what kind of daughter would she be if she did not help? We will put you in, we'll put you in command of, like, our one canoe, or whatever. Influenza has spread to Ayrshire. From where? From Ireland? Ulster. You didn't quarantine your shit, and now this is causing us problems. 
So now we're, you know, we're facing the reality of marching through provinces racked with influenza when we finally go to war. We call our diplomat from Portugal. Um, diplomacy. Who needs to be reminded how great we are? Munster, we're already working on, I think. Oh, we're not working on them. Also, I want to make sure that we have good trust with anyone that we could possibly increase our trust with. France? Do you trust us, France? France is fighting pretenders. They kind of trust us. <laughs> they trust us enough that... Okay, improve the capital. The glory of our capital has long been neglected. We now have an opportunity to improve the city and make it a beacon of cultural pride. This may prove costly, but there is an alternative solution. So we can lose some manpower to gain a base tax, or we can spend some money to gain a base tax. I think we will spend the money, because we need those men for other stuff right now. Our knights have uh, been built back up. You know, it would actually be an interesting mechanic. I don't know if this would be too in-depth for EU4. Um, but yeah, it would actually be kind of interesting if... Uh, Okay, we'll put this on, what, threatening countries? Austria, sure. No, that's not a good use of our time. I don't care what Austria thinks of us. This is sometimes the diplomatic macro builder is like, no, let's not do that. Still go. They like us. I don't think we have any diplo slots free, but... Actually, we'll start in the south. We're going to start in the south, and the re my reasoning for that is uh, they're the people we're going to conquer last. Yeah, so I don't know if this would be too in-depth for EU4, but it would be interesting to get back to what I was saying if there was, like, a distinction between lowborn manpower and noble manpower, because if you think about it, you can't really recruit knights just from, like, at least in a feudal Western society, it would be different for, you know, step words. But in a feudal Western society, you can't exactly recruit uh, knights out of just, like, any random part of the general population. So. And we're going to go ahead and try to keep up on tech, too. Even though I usually wait for institutions to spread, um, I do want to... I, I want to get to a point where we are ticking up innovativeness, so... I'm not going to worry too much about the institution penalty for now. We are getting some Renaissance thought uh, spreading to the capital here. So, And to Perth for some reason. Is that because it's the center of trade? I'm actually not sure why we are, uh, we're gaining institution progress here. Okay, it's a European 10 development province, that's why. So we're just we're hearing we're hearing about this this crazy renaissance thing that's going on in Genoa Genoa cuz I know a <laughs> That was apparently good enough to make Brianna make a sound <laughs> when she's been trying very actively to be very quiet I even have a blanket over my my keys so I don't Oh, it doesn't. It sounds like we have we have a lot going on. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> the the Duke of Burgundy has died, and it looks like Spain uh, inherited it. So that's historical accuracy right there. I very rarely see Spain actually get the Burgundian inheritance. Uh, have fun with uh, hundreds of years of Dutch revolts. I wish you luck, except not really. Norway is building a spy network. They want to conquer back the isle, the rest of the isles, probably. Not going to hire any advisors until we see what our budget looks like once our army is fully built up. Let's 
let's see. We're no longer getting subsidies from France. Hopefully that won't... Well, that did completely destroy our economy. <laughs> All right. Um, new plan. Uh, what are we paying for right now? Mostly army maintenance. Why do we have fleet maintenance? We don't have a fleet. We have no fleet. Which, what fleet are we maintaining? Oh! Never mind, there they are. I guess England did not sink all of our trade ships. <laughs> Which are now being run poorly by uh, the Queen Regent's, like, idiot cousins right now. Uh, the Norwegians are probably just shaking their heads. It's like they're, you know, getting stuck in doldrums and shit and, like, you know, having to swim ashore and ask for help. How do you steer a boat? They're being laughed at in Norwegian. Um, okay. Well, I suppose we'll just lower our army maintenance as much as we can. That didn't do anything, did it? Is it because they're drilling? Does army maintenance not apply when they're drilling? Okay, that's what it is. All right. So we're going to keep them at minimum army maintenance so that we can actually build up the rest of our army. <laughs> so that, uh, the French afforded us the temporary luxury of being able to drill our armies, and now that time is over. Uh, let's see, compensate the traders. They knew what they were getting into. Yeah, we'll compensate the traders. It's more important to actually be able to build up to our force limit than it is to have a really well-drilled army, so. How much professionalism did we get out of that? 2.13%. <laughs> on our way, guys. One of these days, Scotland will have a highly professional army. You might end up having to spend some development points on base tax just to be able to afford everything. I don't want to fall too far behind in technology, though. Uh, we're definitely going to put that money in the treasury, my friend. So, narratively speaking, we've kind of sent everybody back to their farms at this point. That's kind of how I see army maintenance. What army maintenance actually sort of represents an EU4. Um, standardized pikes looks good cool so we're now ahead of time but we're still behind at least one of our neighbors so we're not really going to be gaining any innovativeness I don't think um, of course we're going to go with the gallo glay uh, or gallo glass as they are often called Mercenary bands from the Hebrides who mix traditional Gaelic and Norse styles of warfare to great effect. Like many Gaelic warriors before them, the Gallo Glass used the two-handed battle axe, but were also well armored in the Norse style with chain mail and helmets. They appeared in Ireland from the mid-13th century and soon became highly sought-after warriors in the service of the Irish chiefs right through to the 16th century. The Gallo Glass fought alongside their retainers in what was known as a spar consisting of the warrior, his kern, a Gaelic squire armed with a spear or javelin, and his horseboy armed with a short bow or a sheaf of darts. Collectively, these spars would group in warbands or corwath, corwaz, I don't know, I'm, I promise one of these days I'll learn Irish phonology which could number over a hundred strong. The Gallo Glass were feared by the English as whilst no match for heavy medieval army in the open field, they proved a deadly force in small close confrontations. As a result, they were often used by Irish lords as shock troops in ambush situations. These Hebridean warriors did also find success on the open battlefield, most notably at Bannockburn in 1314. So we probably already had these guys fighting in our army, but we're going to further institutionalize the, uh, the Galaglass here as our main infantry force. Out of curiosity, Kildare. Oh, cool, they conquered Leinster. That's awesome. Would you ever accept vassalization from us? It's possible. It's not impossible. Thomond. 
Desmond. So these guys would potentially, if we got our if we got our economic base up a little bit, they would potentially accept. So we've got some fairly well drilled units here. Let's see. Diplomats have stopped with Munster. Um, let's see. Ormond. Why not? We want all the Irish lords who can have a good opinion of us to have a good opinion of us. Jeez, would you guys just have babies faster and then have them grow to military age? Like, jeez, is that so much to ask? Call. Desmond. Who else is there? Awfully. You guys would make awfully good allies. No response on that one. <laughs> All right. Almost there. Two more units and we will be at full fighting strength. Full theoretical fighting strength at least. And hopefully have enough of a war chest to carry us through our conquest. We already have the claims we need, so we can we can declare war whenever. We, we have a permanent claim on all of Ulster. Desmond and Ormond. Clan Ricard and Kildare. Oh, now Tyr Connell's allied with England. You cheeky bastards. Looking for protection from the great powers for your little corner of whatever over here. Preventing me from being able to complete my mission. Assholes. Breaking of the Douglases! Alright, this used to be an idea, is it not anymore? No, it is still our first idea. <laughs> but apparently we're going to jump the ship on it here. Okay. In 1449, the King King James II, who is now dead, so this is actually Queen Mary that is making this happen in this timeline, um, was old enough to marry and reclaim control of his kingdom. He immediately seized the Livingston estates, but was a bit more lenient against the Douglases. In a quarrel in 1452, however, he himself stabbed William VIII, the Earl of Douglas, to death. So there's medieval Scottish politics for you. Historically, this was the end of the power of the Douglas family, and three years later, all their land was confiscated and their castles demolished. So we get some ducats, we get some admin power, or we can make peace with them and gain stability. I actually think in this timeline, we're going to make peace with the Douglas family. I think that's more valuable to us. And uh, Henry the First, Stuart, is our new king. He is uh, 15 years old. Not a very good administrator, but he's a decent diplomat and an okay fighter. And he is a scholar, so he's going to help advance us technologically. Henry the First is a scholar. The ambition to learn about the world and the governing principles of men and nature makes our ruler able to understand and implement new technology much more efficiently than would otherwise be possible. Um, all right. Wave of obscurantism. Um, we must divert state resources to counteract this dark trend. Um, I think this, I actually, I don't know if this event opens up what we want it to. Because I know that, I know that this can sometimes give us good events with this modifier. Eh, we'll just lose 5 power. 
The House of... This is another Irish thing that I'm not going to be able to pronounce. Ausdana? With the union of Henry I and Euphemia. <laughs> they're really... They're really trying to be super Latin over there. In, uh... Wherever she came from. We have gained not only a spouse, but a new ally in the realm. Ausdana is an old and influential family, and their seat in Perth is a jewel of the kingdom. Lots of spouses coming from Perth, just different clans in Perth. Of course, friendship has to go both ways. Euphemia will be expected to speak for her kin, while our king will be expected to consider such advice very carefully. They have already had a son named Charles. The succession is safe. Our queens always seem to have better stats than our kings. She is a sinner! Uh, Queen Euphemia is widely regarded as a sinner. Personal shortcomings in the leadership of our country have turned the religious establishment against us. So if she ever comes to power, she's going to make religious people unhappy. Because she likes to beg, probably. I mean, her parents did name her Euphemia. What were they, what, what were they really expecting? This is all, all I have to say. All right, we have built up our army, and we are ready to march on Ireland. I'm going to go ahead and put a bookmark in that. Um, I'm going to go probably, probably do some more recording today, but I'm going to at least take a break. So be sure to check out loresworn.com. That's our website, at Lorsworn Order on Twitter. I am at AsaTJ. That is A-S-A-T-J. Uh, we have brought the Hebrides under our control. We have made peace with the Douglases, even though our idea for Break the Black Douglas will <laughs> suggest otherwise. But I think uh, maybe we'll, we'll rationalize this RP-wise as we are working with the Douglas clan to reduce unrest throughout the kingdom. Um, since we, we kind of... We're, we're buddies now. We're, we're buddies with the Douglases. And our march into Ireland is set to begin, which will eventually, it seems, throw us into another conflict with England. Hopefully not too soon. Um, Desmond and Ormond. So these guys are allied with two people that we are already allied with. Um, so we'll have to see which of our allies would side with us over them. Let's, let's actually just go in and see if we can increase trust. Not yet. It does not look like. So we'll have to, yeah, we'll have to see. I think everyone's already aware of the land that I want for myself. Yes, they quite are. So subscribe. Uh, hit the notification thing. This is going to be our new regular five-day-a-week TJ series. And so you'll be able to, uh, to see much more of the rise of Scotland in EU4 rural Britannia very soon, and we'll see you guys next time.